How are we doing there boys and girls? Mathis here, welcome back to another video. So today it's time to uh, dive back into Draenor and take a little bit of a further look at how we can build this gold making machine that I've been talking about so much recently. Uh, I logged on today and decided to do my daily chores per se for Draenor and I thought well what better opportunity to bring you guys along, show you exactly what it is I do. And hopefully just show you that this whole process can be done relatively quickly. Uh, it's really not that complicated once you get things set up. And over time, it just makes you a whole bunch of quick and easy gold. Uh, this is, in essence, part two to a little video. Uh, check out, I will leave, leave a link to part one. And I'll maybe put one of those fancy card things in the top corner if you're watching on the native YouTube app. Uh, this is going to hopefully then sort of showcase uh, the next step in the process. In that first video, we talked a little bit about the, the, the characters you probably want to get up, uh, get leveled up, what professions you may want to have on them. Uh, you, see, I run two accounts, and so this is my auction house account. If I switch over to my main Draenor account where I do all my crafting and playing on, you can see we've got a farming druid and then two what I would consider just profession junkies. These do these dudes do the absolutely bare minimum that they need to do to get the recipes they need for the professions that they have to churn out that stuff. So let's take a let's take a dive in. Let's see what we do to begin with every day, every other day. I'm not very religious with this. I tend to um I, I tend to do this once I've, you know, got a spare half an hour, spare hour. Uh, playing on Draenor, this is not my main realm. This is consider it a side gig. I do this purely, you know, in, in downtime when there's not anything else particularly happening. Or like I said, I've got that spare little bit of time. It's been a day or two since I've logged on to this character. So the chances are we have a full mailbox of expires. So let's grab these out real quickly. Hopefully the servers are running nice and quickly and we can loot these at a fair speed. Um, yeah, maybe not so much. But to talk about one of the very first things I do is I, 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 I simply just get my auction house back in, in, in tune. So that, that involves a few things. Just, you know, uh, gathering any cancelled items, uh, taking a little look at the value of materials. We do a little bit of auction house work. My auction house work on most realms, dependent on quite how many things I'm listing. Maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes max per character, uh, per realm that I choose to play on. It doesn't take overly, overly long. Um, and often while I'm, because I've got the luxury of having two accounts, I can kind of multitask this a little bit. So, you know, as you can see, items are being looted now. We can go straight to the auction house. This only goes as, uh, this does a really good job of just emphasizing how, you know, once you've got Trade School Master set up effectively, I don't really have to do anything. I know that if I've got everything Shadowlands selected and I run post scan, it's going to do what I want it to do um, with some very simple operations in place. It's just going to throw everything on the auction house. It's going to undercut what's currently there. Um, it doesn't min max on price too heavily. This, this for reference, this uh, this profile that I'm using for Trade School Master, is the one that my Patreons get access to. So if you happen to be a silver goblin or a gold goblin over on my Patreon, you can import this profile yourself with all the groups, all the operations, and it works just pretty much out of the box. Now it is designed pretty heavily for crafters. Uh, if you plan on you know doing any flipping or farming. You might need to make a few tweaks or adjustments, but uh, to put it simply, you know, you craft a bunch of stuff really easily and then it's going to post it. And it's it may not necessarily, you'll see some situations like this where it's below minimum price, it will post at a minimum price. For whatever reason, if the market has switched uh, against you, it will just post it at a minimum price. And that minimum will still mean that if it does sell, you will make a little bit of gold on it. There's the luxury that most things nowadays relative to their actual buyout price don't cost that much to put them on the auction house. Your enchants, uh, your 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 potions, your flasks, all that sort of stuff. Uh, heavy turnover stuff, you'll usually find that you can throw it up on the auction house. It's going to cost you almost nothing to do so. Um, and, and this is why cancel scanning is such a thing nowadays. You can, in theory, cancel those auctions and relist them all day long if you wish. And as and when they do sell, you've still made a profit. 
Um, so you don't have to worry too much about, you know, whether they will actually sell or not. But even in that one per first post scan, we've got 138 things listed on the auction house, uh, mostly just undercutting what's already there. And we can, uh, we can rinse and repeat this process until we're done. The, the second thing I usually do once I've worked my way through any expired auctions and got things listed again is I check the price and materials for a few things. Now, on Draenor at the moment, as you can see, we are not really wealthy enough to, to stockpile many materials. In fact, I'm so poor on Draenor at the moment, uh, and it's mainly because I've just unlocked the ability to craft 230 and 200 item level bits of gear. And they're quite expensive to craft. So there was a bit of an investment for me crafting some of these things initially. Uh, you can see crafting costs can easily be a thousand gold, four or five thousand gold a piece for some of these. So a lot of my liquid gold got invested in that. Uh, when this is listing, we'll take a little look at the TSM graph and it will show that a little bit better. Uh, let's get those listed. We can now also, you can see with our TSM graph for Draenor, that we, we, this was about the point to where we got to after doing some simple farming. Those of you that are smart and have watched part one of this series will realize there was a bit of a gap in time between the two. And it was during that period we were starting to craft a few little basic things, but also doing a little bit of farming, getting that farming out the way. Getting the farming done so that, you know, you go, you invest time, you gather materials, and then you sell some materials. This is what some of these spikes will be. Uh, I did some reasonable sales of drums when the Mage Tower, uh, you know, was at its peak. We sold a whole bunch of light, uh, we bought a whole bunch of lightless silk, we sold a whole bunch of raw beast hide, we were doing some farming. We were, we were lucky enough to find a few things relatively cheap, so we were able to generate a little bit of cash. We got up to just under 200,000 gold, and then I did the stupid thing of investing nearly every single penny I had into crafting. This was, like I said, this was the point when I unlocked the 200 and the 230 item level gear. Uh, and to even just crafting one of those, you know, 200,000 gold doesn't get you very far very quickly. Um, but it will be worthwhile. You can see, you know, a few post boxes, a few days of sales, a few more days of sales and we'll be back to where we were. And then obviously everything else on top is profit. So let's get these listed. This is mailbox, uh, probably two of three, I'd imagine, based on how many things I have. Using the scroll wheel macro makes this whole process really simple. All I'm doing is literally holding the control button, scrolling my mouse wheel up and down, and it's a macro that just spams this post button for you. It's not quite as powerful as what it used to be. You, you used to, back in the day, be able to just spin your wheel, and it would, you know, queue up everything, and then you could AFK, and it would still be listing in the background. That was quite cool. But, you know, times change. So let's get all of these up. Once we've done uh, some basic auction house stuff, it will be time to do some restocking of anything that we've sold. Now, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully in our next mailbox, we might get to some of the sales. And any item that we sell, we're only selling them out of profit. So we can, we comfortably know we can go back and recraft that item and try and do it again. That's kind of the trick to this at the beginning is to, is to work your way through as much stuff as you can, preferably as quickly as you can, so that you know any profit that you make from it, you can reinvest into crafting more and more things. So let's grab these. Here we can see our sales. You can see from our sales we sold some Essence of Torments uh, are going to be the big one here. Essence of the, the Essences currently, I'm not investing them into Legendaries. Now, Legendaries will be my end goal, but any prospecting that I need to do currently, I'm basically recuperating the cost of the ore by selling the Essences, and then the gems that I get are going into the the jewellery that we're crafting, we're even crafting up a few of the duplets and the uh, the clusters uh, to sell those on the auction house as well. But we're, we're making most of our gold back on the cost of the ore by selling those essences back out again. So it's a, a cash flow positive system once again. Uh, a shade bound vest for 9,000 gold, now I would assume that's going to be a 230, 
possibly a 200 if we were really lucky. But you can see most of the stuff we're selling is just, you know, we're chipping away at little things. Shadow, shadow Lace Cowl, shadow, uh, Shade Bound Arm Guards. These were probably the entry level stuff, maybe even the 117 stuff. I seem to be having a lot of good luck with the lower level crafted gear simply because people are just ignoring it this late into the expansion. Um, but this is this is what we want to do. You want to just, you know, sell a few little bits and pieces. Take this gold. Take this forty thousand gold, forty-four thousand gold on top of our eighty thousand gold pile. Now means that we've got a hundred twenty-six thousand gold, which, as and when we go do some crafting, you can see after after only a few days of selling some things, we're already back. You know over halfway to where we were before before we invested in crafting a bunch of things what we can now do is take this hundred and thirty odd thousand gold that we now have and do a restock on our crafting profession so let's whilst that's just posting in the background let's jump on to one of our crafters run a tsm restock and see what the damage is see what we see what we need to craft see what trade school master is going to tell us is profitable Tell us what we should be looking to craft up. And hopefully, let's see if we can afford to craft it all. Now, we might not be able to. I know the way that my profile is set up currently. Um, it's it's because the item level 200 and the 230 gear is technically at least until we get into patch 9.2, the highest level catch-up gear that we can craft. And because of that, I actually have it to set to craft, I think, three, maybe five of each which obviously, as you can imagine, gets pretty expensive pretty quickly. But it gives me a range of secondary stats on there without having to use missives, which is um, a bonus. It means that some items might, just by pure luck, if anything else, sell a little bit quicker. Uh, we do not want that invitation. We also probably don't want this last restock queue. It's out of date now. Um, we'll give TSM a minute to do its synchronization in the background before we do a restock. Um, but from here, there are a couple of things I actually post manually. It's not it's not normal for me to sell the essences uh, raw. I uh, <laughs> under mo most circumstances I will keep these and turn them into legendaries. But as it stands right now, I'll just post these very quickly as they are raw. Somebody trying to be cheeky there. Uh, yeah, that looks about gravy right tsm should have done its thing in the background by now what we can now do this is we'll start with leather working leather working is always a fun one um, lots to choose from with leather working because you're crafting both leather and mail gear and the profits on the leather working stuff is usually pretty good i have no idea why leather working is often more profitable than the others um couldn't tell you why, it just usually is. But from here we can go to TSM groups. Now this character is a leather worker and a tailor. So I can choose to do both of these at the same time. We'll see We'll see just how much it's going to cost us to recraft everything. Ooh, okay. As I thought, it's going to cost us a little bit more than what we can actually afford. Uh, we can see over here that we've actually only got maybe 125,000 gold. Even if we were to spend all of it. Now, we probably don't want to spend all of it. So what you can do is you can curate this little list a little bit. Um, this gives me a good opportunity to tell you how this crafting queue works. Is There is actually, although it doesn't look like there's much of an order to it, other than can you make it or can you not make it, there is actually a little bit of order behind it. So the items that you can that you already have materials for. So the ones that show in green means that you can craft everything that you need to craft. You already have the materials, you just gotta press the go button. Um, of those items, it will stack them based on their profits. So if you look at the little tool tips, you will see that Desolate Armor Kits, they have a you know 15 gold profit on each one currently. Um, which is crazy high for one of these. Uh, but either way, 15 gold profit. But that's not as much as if I was to use those materials to craft a shade-bound gauntlets. They show a profit of 164 gold. The Shadow Scale Helm has a potential profit of 500 gold. And these bone-bound knuckles, it appears to have a potential profit of 676 gold. So you can see it prioritizes uh, the most profitable crafts at the top of the list. 
So what we're going to want to do, we don't, we can't afford this right now. We need to trim this down a little bit. Um, we probably want to get rid of a few things that we know are expensive uh, and are going to chunk into a large portion of our restock and equally things that aren't particularly profitable right now. So this is where you can go down to the bottom of your list. Go down to the bottom of the list and a few things like this that we only need to craft one of, but they're not particularly profitable, um, yet they still may have quite a lot of cost involved. I'm gonna just get rid of a few of these things at the bottom. Um, now, this will hopefully bring this value down to a point to where we can get to where we can actually afford to recreate everything. Uh, estimated cost was going up and down then. I'm not quite sure why it was doing that, but either way, now we're down to 150k. Uh, 145,000 gold, we're getting there slowly but surely. We want to only focus on the super valuable stuff, but within our means, right? So let's knock a few of these off the bottom for the moment. We want to spread our gold out on across as many items as possible. Um, so this is this list now is only going to cost us 83,000 gold, but it has the potential when we craft and then sell those items to turn into a nice profit of 50k. I'll take 50k profit. There's 177 items to craft. Now we don't have all the materials for this yet, um, but it does indicate to us that we should quite comfortably with the gold that we have, and more importantly with the gold that you want to invest. Um, we can craft this list of items, get these listed, and we can be up and running. So, how do we then how do we then proceed from here? Well, if you want, if you run just one account, if you only have the one account, uh, you probably at this point want to start jumping between some of your characters to gather those materials up. Namely, probably to your bank character to either buy some materials um, or to gather up some materials you may have already bought. I run on two accounts though, um, which means this gathering system and the task list doesn't work quite as smoothly as uh, as it does for people that only operate off the one single account. Um, and so what I tend to do is I have a very simple setup for my task list. You'll see here that it's telling me to craft some of the crafters marks. That's fine. That's not a problem. It's telling me to use tailoring to craft some of the lower level marks. This is probably because they're cheaper to craft them with tailoring than they are with leatherworking and all the other materials. It's just telling me to buy them from the auction house. You'll see on my list here, there's this little price source that I don't have alts selected. Um, most of the time you are going to want to collect materials from alts. Um, the only reason I don't do it is because this realm that I play on is purely a side gig and it's purely for gold making. If I buy materials and send them to that one character, I want them to stay on that character because I bought them for a reason. I probably bought them to craft something and maybe I ended up missing an item or two. I don't want to then take them off that character, move them somewhere else um, to maybe have to, you know, move them back again at a later date. So I understand that my setup is a little bit different to how some people would have it set up, but the fundamental way of using it is the same. So now I can go, I can jump between my two accounts and I can gather up some of these materials and we can get this little list knocked off quite quickly. So callus hide, we need 74 pieces of callus hide. Let's go to the auction house. Um, when I buy materials, I don't even use trade school master by the way. Um, I have a favorites list set up. Any materials that I buy frequently and want to keep uh, an eye on the price of, uh, I favorite them using the star system in the default default UI. The default UI loads instantly. There's no lag. There's no searching involved with the default UI. Um, and it, it, it honestly just works quicker. Um, so I can now go to Callus Hide. You still have the Trade School Master tooltips. You can still see from here that we have, you know, uh, min buyouts, market values. You can kind of see all of the information there. Callus Hide at 20 gold a piece on this realm seems to be pretty competitive. And we only need how many? We need 74. Uh, I usually buy a few spare just, you know, to be safe. A few spare for next time, if nothing else. So Callus Hide, we then need 231 desolate leather. Desolate leather. Let's do 250. Now, of course, if you've already bought these materials, take them out your bank, you know, send them over, um, gather up those materials as you need. 
I just know on this realm that I probably don't have them already, so I do actually need to buy them. But Heavy Callus Hide, 77. This is, might be where it gets expensive. Um, one thing to note, actually, this is a good opportunity to show you that don't always blindly trust what Trade School Master tells you. Heavy Callus Hide, for example, here is, at the moment, is nearly down to 200 gold a piece on Draenor. This is a huge, monstrous server. It's not surprising the materials are cheap. But you should always have that knowledge of that, well, what happens with maybe converting Callus Hide? If Callus Hide was only, say, 18 gold a piece, it would still be cheaper to buy Callus Hide and turn it into Heavy Callus Hide than it would be to buy the Heavy Callus Hide itself. But in this scenario, Heavy Callus Hide is remarkably cheap. We might just buy exactly however many we need, which is, what, 77? 77 of those. Uh, we'll buy a few spare just for good luck. Uh, next we need some Lightless Silk, 160 Lightless Silk. 160, let's buy 170 just to be safe. And finally we need, let's say, 1200 Shrouded Cloth. Shrouded Cloth, 1200, boom. Right, there's, all, there's, our, there's our shopping done. We spent, I mean, we didn't actually spend anywhere near as much as what was estimated. That probably means that we've got materials lying about from last time we did a restock. So let's send those over. I can't even remember this character's name. Uh, this character is called Some Doritos. People who watch the stream over on twitch.tv forward slash Mantheus will hopefully understand that little meme there. Let's get that sent over. Um, it might be worth at this point to check how much gold this character's got. This character's only got uh, a thousand or so gold. It might be worth sending 10k over, 10,000 gold over there as well. Just if it needs to buy some vendor materials. Let's grab everything out the mailbox then. And now we can set to work. Oh, where did those pallid bones come from? We must have bought those last time. No bother, no issue. So let's now, let's go, let's first open, let's get the basic stuff done first. Let's open tailoring. You can use these task list buttons as well. It will open then the window that you need to open and then you can click the button again and it's gonna craft up my novice crafters marks that I need. It'll only queue up as many as we need to craft. Uh, because there's nothing left to gather in the list, we should just be able to bang out these crafts and then be up and running. If we if we open this window now, you'll start to see these numbers change. You'll start to see the color of these change from sort of greens. Uh, the yellows will slowly turn to greens as we complete the material list for them, so to say. And then TSM will reorder things based on profit again. So even if you don't get, you know, all of the materials that you need, you can still comfortably craft the things at the top of the list first, work through those in a sort of logical order, and it will mean that you are focusing your materials into the things that are potentially most profitable for you. Now, while these chip away, um, one thing I will state is that you may have noticed that I'm, you know, quite carefree at the moment with how I buy my materials. This is because it's a really, really big server. Um, you only really get this luxury on a monstrously large server because I kind of know that the materials are going to be so heavily in demand, in supply, sorry. If we take a look at just how many materials there are on the auction house for some of these items, there's over 100,000 Phaedrum ore on this auction house, for example, right now. Uh, the quantities available for some of these materials are just bonkers um, and that usually means that they are just going to be pushed down to the absolute cheapest price most of the time more importantly though it's because of the items that i'm crafting i'm not crafting super you know super high-end super competitive items here these are you know basic bits of leveling gear some simple consumables uh, nothing too fancy and it's usually because that we're crafting this stuff that's not too fancy, not too end game, that there's usually a lot more profit in it. Um, you can see it's gonna cost us 80K to craft it all, but we can still make 50,000 gold of profit. You know, 
don't have to worry too much about your material prices when there's the chance of so much profit involved. If those profit margins were much skinnier, if we were going to, you know, if we had to spend 80,000 gold to say make only 10,000 gold profit, then you might want to focus on, you know, focus uh, you're getting those materials at a better price, uh, making sure that you're paying the absolute cheapest for your materials especially we when we eventually get into legendaries when we finally get into legendaries every penny counts trust me uh, especially in the ranks ones twos and threes when you get to the higher end stuff you can start being a little bit more slack about it but to begin with uh, you definitely will need to be careful now one downside of tsm uh, sometimes when you're crafting these intermediate items especially the crafters marks uh, for some reason it gets the calculations wrong some of the materials it doesn't quite remember that you need um, or miscalculates things so after you've crafted some of these intermediate things you might then start to see things pop up again on your gathering list so don't entirely close your gathering list you might have to go back and buy a few more things in this scenario we need 342 penumbra thread um, I kind of foresaw that being a thing which is why I sent some gold over uh, one of these vendors is going to sell me penumbra thread uh, I can see it on the list here, but if I want to buy the exact quantity, I can just click the buy button. Boom, there we go. And finally, we need 48 heavy desolate leather from the auction house as well. Uh, desolate leather's at 5. Heavy desolate leather takes 10 of that. So for heavy desolate leather, we want for around the 50 gold mark. It's 62. We should probably buy the desolate leather and turn it into heavy desolate leather ourselves. But I'm a little bit lazy and we don't need too much of it. And like we said, the profits are good. So we can buy 50 of that. Yes, we are spending a little bit more gold than we probably have to. But at the same time, we've saved ourselves the, you know, however long it takes to craft 50 of these things. So I don't mind. Time is money, you know. Let's grab those. Let's get these last few things crafted. How long has this video been now? Oh, we've been we've been talking for nearly half an hour. So you can see that um, without doing any cuts or skips or anything along those lines, um, for a single profession, we spent maybe what 10, 15 minutes on the auction house, just getting some things relisted. And doing some simple crafting like this is maybe another 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how many professions you do. Um, the way that I've got my character set up now. I've got about five minutes of crafting ahead of me to complete this list. Um, I then might need to do the same thing on my other character to do blacksmithing and uh, what's the other profession he has? Jewel crafting. Um, but even then, we would still be way under the hour mark. I'll do these two professions just as they are right now. I might not craft up these heavy shrouded cloth bandages. Uh, and I might not craft the desolate armor kits. These are actually the two items that are going to take a considerable amount of time to craft. But then we'll get these craft these newly crafted items sent over. We'll get them listed on the auction house. And in real time, we have spent less than half an hour. Uh, and this is this is the blessing of Trade School Master. In less than half an hour, we've kept our auction house in in tune. Uh, not only have we kept the auction house in tune, we've potentially made another. 50,000 gold profit um, from, from just doing some very simple crafting. It's really not too difficult at all. Compare that against nearly any single farm that you can do right now. Uh, sure, you might be able to go out there and farm 50,000 gold worth of materials. But on a server of this size with these material prices, uh, you are probably going to struggle to get much more than... I don't know, 10, 15,000 gold an hour for your efforts. We've, we've in essence, generated a value somewhere in the region of about four hours worth of work. And we've done it all in, you know, less than half an hour at this point, which is pretty nice. Let's quickly craft some of these up. That'll do for now. I don't need to, to fully complete the list for the purpose of the video. I can come back to this in a minute. Um, once you've crafted all the items, you can also continue to use T Trade Skill Master. Um, you can either do a slash reload to uh, reload your interface, or you can press the clean up bag button um, to reorder everything in your bags. 
either 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 method will do the same thing but then you can open your mailbox head to your groups um, and I've just got them set to automatically send the crafted items over to my bank character and after everything flies nice and simple is are they soul bound they're soul bound from there loot them open all mail And once again, with Trade School Master correctly set up in the first place, we don't have to worry too much about, you know, what the prices of these things are and, you know, who's doing what on the market. We can very simply open the auction house, hit post scan, and off they go. And in most cases, considering we're not, you know, we're not fighting too heavily for like maximizing profits or anything like that we're pretty much just undercutting everybody that's already there and still making a nice little profit no problems whatsoever with a few spare items to list once these ones sell as well lovely stuff so that boys and girls was my daily routine i suppose this is what i do uh i pro <laughs> Arguably, I probably don't even do this every day. I maybe only do this once every couple of days because, like I said, Draenor is a bit of a side gig for me. Uh, but it generates a reasonable amount of gold eventually. And the, the, the point is, is once you start having more gold, you can start moving into the more expensive items. Like I said, our main focus will be to, to move into legendaries eventually. But we've got to make a little bit of gold to get there in the first place. Recrafting this, you know, catch-up gear, recrafting some consumables. Utilising, you know, Trade School Master to its fullest, you can get there pretty quickly, pretty easily. Um, it'll take a month or so, sure, before you start making, you know, a, a token's worth of gold or so. Um, but in just, you know, in, if I look at the last three months for this character, this character's not even three months old. It's literally only, you know, a couple of months old. We, we got ourselves leveled, we got the professions in order, we did a little bit of farming to get some startup gold, and then since then it's just been reinvesting in some crafting. We spent a bit of time out in Corthia, uh, we invested heavily to get up and running with 200 and 230 gear, but within the next few days we'll hopefully sell enough of this to you know, push the graph in a nice upwards direction. And eventually, once we maybe hit, I don't know, one one and a half maybe two million gold maybe then we'll start looking to to dip our toe into the legendary market and start chipping away there so join me again next time uh, and we will continue on with our little adventure on draenor i apologize for no camera in this video um it's shortly before christmas i'm going to be honest i'm feeling a little under the weather so a day without camera was probably sensible you don't want to look at my ugly mug every day anyway uh, but give this video a like if you enjoyed it consider subscribing if you're new and uh, i'll catch you all later boys and girls in a bit peace